outside of my house where I'm going to be adding a few more raised garden beds in a way that is fast, easy, and budget friendly. So as you can see, it is very drizzly. It's a little chilly here in Eastern Washington, but I'm not going to complain about any sort of April showers since we're typically pretty dry. Um, normally I would wait for better conditions, but we're going to be gone this weekend, so I need to get these raised beds built so that I'm ready to plant my garden. So let me give you a look at what I have so far. Again, this is the south side of my house and I just have a very small garden. My brother built me this four x four raised bed a few years ago and then I built a matching one last spring. And you can see they're just four foot boards. Um, they were longer, they've been cut to four foot. And then you can see there's four posts in each corner that kind of hold the boards together. And that's what I'm gonna continue making today is another four by four foot bed to put right here. I'm gonna remove this ornamental grass and move some of this drip tubing and just put it right here in this little area. It's nice and flat and just ready to go. And as you can see, I have some existing drip tube that I can tap into as well. I'll probably just be getting my tubing kind of ready, tucking it under the edge of the new raised beds so that we're ready to go once we turn our water on. So as for this area, I just pulled together last year a few concrete planters and made a few little strawberry areas. It worked fine, but I think I can do a lot better. So I'm gonna make one more raised bed, a little more narrow this time to fit right in here. Everything's looking a little scraggly right now. You can tell I need to come in and clean some things up, tidy up some wires got some equipment, some staples, and that's just kind of how it goes. But these beds actually do look pretty nice once everything is planted. Um, I'm thinking of adding in some kind of cool uh, trellises this year. We'll have to kind of wait and see, but <laughs> definitely not looking their best right now. So just a quick word on raised garden beds. There are so many different beautiful kinds of raised beds these days that I see online or at different people's houses. Um, there are beautiful kits that you can order, plans you can buy and have built. Um, and they're just very kind of designer looking, very beautiful. Um, and, and they're just great. I hope to have a garden like that someday, but just so you know, this is geared more towards just quickly pulling together a raised garden bed so that I can get to planting my garden and just get my gardening going. Right, wrong, somewhere in the middle, I'm not sure, but this has worked for me for the past several years at my old house and here at my new house. So. It works for me and that's just what I've done and what I'll probably continue to do until I get that designer raised bed someday. So this isn't really a how-to video. This is just me sharing my process for how I build my raised garden beds. All right, in terms of how we go about doing this, it's very easy. I don't own any sort of fancy saw. The only kind of saw I have is just an old fashioned hand saw. Um, so what we do and what we did yesterday, my husband's home for spring break, so he went with me. Normally I do this by myself or with my kids uh, in tow. But what we did is we just went down to Lowe's into their lumber section and picked out our different lumber that we needed. I knew I wanted to build a four by four foot raised bed using 10 inch wide planks just to stay consistent with what I have here already. Um, and so we went down there and just picked out our lumber and the associates there are always happy to saw and cut the lumber into whatever sizes we need to. Now that does not include our four by four inch posts. They don't have the ability to cut that thick of wood. So we do have to hand saw that. And that's the hardest part really. All right, so you can see here what I'm working with. It's a little damp, um, but here's one of the four by four inch uh, by eight foot long posts. And you can see we've already cut the other one into 18 inch pieces. And again, those are gonna be used in the corners of each box. And then here we have one uh, plank that's been cut into four, two and a half foot long pieces. And then over here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, two by 10 
by eight foot planks that we just had cut in half so they're each four feet long and those will make up our size our four foot sides so one two three four that will make up my one four by four inch box using four four by four inch 18 inch long posts in the corners and then one two these will be my two four foot sides for my more narrow box using uh one two three four two and a half foot long uh planks for the more narrow front and back sides so hopefully that makes sense it's really pretty simple and then of course i do have my drill and some screws to put everything together All right, so I have my first side all laid down and I have my first screws drilled right down through the top board into the post. So what I'm gonna do is just keep screwing in these boards down into the posts and this will complete our first side. And then I'll just keep going and make the other side and then I'll start on the third. Okay, so as you can see here, all I did was once I had the two uh, sides completed, I just stood them up on their ends and then ran some more four foot planks across the top. This is what works best for me. I suppose you could lay them out and kind of drill in sideways, but I like kind of having the leverage of drilling down because you need to use some force in order to keep them nice and tight and kind of even. Um, so now what I need to do is just flip this upside down and I'm just going to do the same thing and run my last two four foot boards across what will be the top here in just a second. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our first four by four foot raised bed completed. All I need to do now is go ahead and place it. And it looks like my husband dug up that grass while I was working. So I'll just get him out here when he's ready and we can lift it and set it down. 
All right, we've got our first box placed. We've got a little more leveling to do, but I think we'll save that for a nicer day. And then of course, we'll go in, probably line the bottom with some cardboard and then start filling it with some nice garden soil and amendments. I realized I didn't mention anything about the type of wood I'm using, so just a quick word on that. I'm no expert. Based on what I've heard and what I've researched, what I've experienced, your best types of wood to use for a raised garden bed are cedar or a redwood. Um, they are a little more expensive, but they tend to be a little more durable when it comes to moisture and decay, and they look nice. Um, I'm using an untreated Douglas fir, which Douglas fir grows abundantly here in the Pacific Northwest, which means it's pretty readily available um, at stores near me. So if you're building onto a garden year after year like me, that means I can go and find the same wood year after year, and so my garden beds look consistent, which is nice. And Douglas fir is a great choice also. It stands up to moisture and decay pretty well, um, and I think it looks nice. It kind of ages out to a nice gray, which I think is just nice and cute and cottagey. So I just say, do your research and <laughs> choose what works for you. My drill dive and my little one just couldn't quite do it so I figured we should take a little break and check out our front porch to see how it's coming along. All right our flowers are still looking so pretty but my favorite thing I think is the lettuce. See how it's kind of filled in it just looks so springy and fresh. I love it but of course these bright flowers are still so pretty. I love this blue more lettuce everything's just looking really nice i'm really hoping that my drill charges in time to where i can finish before that arrives <laughs> kind of just racing the clock here We have our raised beds in place. This one, our narrow bed, you can see our strawberries are still down in there. So I couldn't quite get it situated and set just yet. Again, we are racing some rain that's heading our way. So I think I'm gonna save that for another day. I'll dig those up and then of course, get the bed situated, leveled, so it's nice and even with these other two that are all on the same level. We'll get some soil in there and it'll be all ready to plant. And then of course we have our little step down to where we have our third four by four foot raised bed. So from this angle, this is kind of our nice flex space. It's a driveway. We can access our backyard. We can park things here. Of course, we have our garden. I'd like to do a nice little fire pit area here. And then in the late spring and summer, we do put our pool right here. I'd love to do some party lights and just kind of keep working on this space. But for now, it's a great location, especially for a garden because it is south facing. So it gets nice full sun. And we do have this drip line right here. It's a little scraggly right now. We had to kind of move it, um, but it runs right behind all of our garden beds right in here. And you can see for this bed, I've got some things back here I'm storing, but it just taps right in and I've run the quarter inch drip tubing right under the raised bed and then it comes out right here and then I just weave this soaker hose and use some garden staples to kind of secure it however I need to so that all of my plants are getting watered. 
So that's kind of my next step for these new garden boxes. Um, we have our existing drip tube and I do like to work with drip tubing when it's a little warmer. It's just a little easier to manipulate and kind of bend. Um, so what I'll need to do is take some quarter inch and I will tap into this drip tube and uh, run the quarter inch right under here. I'll make a little trench in the gravel, run it right up and out uh, kind of like I did for our pots and that way I'll just have access and from there I can go ahead and put on whatever emitters, sprayers, whatever I choose. So that'll be just fine and I will do the same for our narrow bed up there. What What's do you, up, boy, boy? What do you think? Love it. You love it? Oh. Brett's admiring the garden What's from the up, balcony. Boy, boy? Like I said earlier, this is a very fast, easy, budget-friendly project that I think just about anybody could do. I think for cost, I spent about $130 uh, for materials, which I think is a great price. Of course, if you go with cedar or redwood, you will be spending a little bit more. So it just varies based on what materials you choose. So within the course of just one afternoon, I was able to almost double my garden space. I'm really excited. I feel like I can visualize a little better what I want to plant. And it just feels like I'm that much closer to getting my garden going. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.